boys and girls, so next we're gonna talk about rainforest animals. And as you can see, I have an enormous list of all the rainforest animals that I could think of. Um, usually we would do this together where I would ask you to tell Mrs. Garropy an animal that you could think of from the rainforest and I would write it down. But I've looked through all of our books and I made the biggest list that I can come up with. So what's really interesting, and I know I mentioned this in another video, is that the rainforest is home to half of the world's animals. All the animals that are in the entire world, the rainforest has half of them, which is pretty incredible. So I'm going to go through each of the animals and name them, and then you might notice on a few, I have a little blue sticky note that I just stuck to the side because maybe I wanted to write something down or some information about that just to help Mrs. Garropy remind myself to tell you about it because there's just so much to remember when it comes to the rainforest animals. All right, let's get started. So um, the first one I have listed is a jaguar. Have you ever seen a jaguar in a video before? Awesome, jaguar starts with j, j, a j. Next is an ocelot, can you say that? Ocelot, good, an ocelot is in the cat family and it kind of looks like a leopard or a cheetah, but it's not as big. So an ocelot, think about a cat. I know Max, you have a cat, right? Actually, no, you have a couple cats. So think about Max's cat when he shows them to us on Fun Friday videos and pretend there's two cats put together in one body. So about, can you see my hands? About this big, it's a smaller cat and they love to hang out up in the treetops. They just love to relax in the trees. They have all those cool spots on them. Okay, so that's an ocelot. Next are monkeys. There's lots of different types of monkeys in the rainforest, okay? Um, a tapper, so I wrote down a tapper is actually an animal that looks like a combination of a horse and a rhino put together. So think about what a rhinoceros looks like. Oh, he's big kind of round, he's got that big head and horn. And then think about oh, what a horse looks like. He's got long, tall legs, right? And then he's got that longer neck that extends out to his head. So you put those two together and you come up with a tapper. The first sound of tapper is a t, t, t. Awesome. The next one is the capybara. Can you say that? Capybara, it's kind of fun to say. And a capybara has this really interesting nose that when it's out, it's normal, like kind of going up. And then when he sees food, it starts to bend down and it towards the food. And then when he's gonna eat, it curls right under. So it's a nose that can go one, two, or three different places. Now the gross thing about a capybara, I'll show you what I wrote. Let's see if you can see this. You know what that word is? Maddie doesn't like to say it. Poop! A capybara, I'm so sorry to tell you, eats his own poop. <laughs> Can you imagine? Disgusting! But some animals just do what they want out there in the rainforest, and a capybara is one of them. <laughs> All right, the next is the okapi. Can you say that? Okapi. Some people say okapi, okapi, like tomato, tomato. Okapi, okapi. Now, these guys are so cool looking. Um, I almost thought about drawing it when I made my little illustration for you um, a few more slides later, but um, you are welcome to draw this one. It's really interesting. So think about what a zebra looks like, right? He's got four legs. He's white with black stripes on him. And then think about what a horse looks like. A horse has a long neck, brown head, well, if we're talking about a brown horse, brown long head, and then his torso, remember we talked about that word torso, that's from here, your shoulders, to your hips, and everything in between. So everyone touch your torso. Torso, that's your torso. A horse's torso is all usually the same color. Well, with these, so cool, they are half and half. So can you see that it looks like a horse? It's got a long neck and his whole torso is the same. And then when it gets down here to his legs, his front two and his back two legs, all four look like a zebra. Isn't that amazing? 
Okay, here's him standing. You see, you think he's a horse and then you're like, hey, what's up with that horsey's legs? They look like a zebra. If you just looked at his head, you would think he was a horse with a couple of horns sticking out on the top. Look at his tongue. Isn't that interesting? So, so neat. Now, an, an occupy's tongue can actually, you wouldn't, you wouldn't expect this, you ready? And my tape measure again, it could be 17 inches long. So picture this, oops, picture this, 17 inches if he stuck his tongue out. It would go all the way that long. Hmm, Mrs. Garapiz is not that long, is it? Isn't that funny? So he's got zebra legs, he's got a horse body, and he's got a 17 inch tongue. Such a cool animal. And you would only find them in the rainforest, which I love. All right, other things you'd find in the, the rainforest, ants, lots of ants. You'll find, um, there's a few of them. There's poisonous ants, there's um, uh, leaf cutter ants. So they go and they, dip, 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 dip. they bite all around the edges of a little leaf and then they take a piece and you'll see like a whole family or a whole group of the ants marching and they all have a piece of a leaf with them. And it, it might all be the same leaf that they worked on and they took it all apart and as a, a group, they all move that leaf back to their little home. Cool. All right. And if you see ants, there's got to be an ant eater nearby, right? Okay. So what's really interesting about an ant eater, you can find them in a few places, but they are in the rainforest. An ant eater's tongue, remember, an ant eater, he has no teeth in his mouth. He has that long, skinny snout, and coming out of it is a tongue. Do you want to see how long his tongue can be in order to get those ants? Are you ready? Still going. Right there. That, boys and girls, is 24 inches, two feet. That's how long... An anteater's tongue can come out in order to catch his ants. Can you imagine if I was an anteater? That's how long my tongue would be. <laughs> I'd have to slurp up all of those ants. That's very long. Very, very long. All right, the next word that I have written down is a snake. Now, we know there's lots of snakes in the rainforest, right? There's all different colors of the snakes. There's skinny snakes, and there's very wide snakes. Um, a few kinds are the boa constrictors, and those are the ones that will wrap, 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 wrap around their prey until it can't breathe and it dies. That's how they kill them. And then they swallow the whole thing all at one time. They don't take a bite, they swallow the whole thing. Another one would be um, an anaconda. Have you ever heard of an anaconda snake? Yeah. An anaconda snake, when it's born, when it's a baby, is also two feet, the size of an anteater's tongue. So that's how big a baby anaconda is when it hatches from its egg. Remember how snakes have the soft-shelled eggs? Remember we talked hard shell, soft shell? Snakes are reptiles, so they come out of the soft shells. Now, when it grows to an adult anaconda, I can't even show you using my tape measure. You know why? Because an adult anaconda grows up to 30 feet long. Do you know how big that is? That is the size of a school bus. An anaconda can be the size of a school bus. Oh my goodness, if I was on a jungle hunt and searching through the rainforest for cool creatures and cool animals, and I came across an anaconda, a snake that was as long as a school bus, I would scream, cry, and run away. Oh, I would be so scared. Raise your hand if you also would be so petrified and nervous and scared and afraid. Oh my goodness, raise your hand if you'd be brave and think it was cool. Really? Oh, not me. Not me, not me. All right, um, the next one is a crocodile. 
Oh my goodness. I'm going to give you um, another video with alligators versus crocodiles so you can learn the difference between the two of them. You're not going to find an alligator in the rainforest. You will only find types of crocodiles. Okay, and we'll look into seeing how you can tell the difference between alligators and crocodiles. It's pretty interesting. You can look at where their eyes are, if they're on the side of their head or the top of their head. You can look and see what shape their snout is. You can look and see if their teeth stick out or if they're inside. There's lots of little clues that you can tell the difference. Ask an adult in your house if they know the difference between an alligator and a crocodile. And we, we can quiz them. You can, you can try and trick them and see if they can figure it out. I'll teach you about it, okay? All right, the next one is something that um, Norella has. She shows us on our Fun Friday calls. Turtle, right? She showed us, I think, her brown belly turtle last week and her yellow belly turtle this week. Um, turtle and a tortoise. We learned the difference between turtles and tortoises already, but you can actually find both of those in the rainforest. Next is an armadillo. Have you ever seen an armadillo before? He's brown, he's like this. He has this shell on him, almost like a, a tortoise or a turtle. And it's interesting because there's all different pieces, almost like a fan. And then when he gets nervous or scared, he whoop, curls up into a little ball and his shell protects him in a circle. Um, and that's how he keeps himself safe from any predators that might try and eat him. All right, next I have birds. Uh, I have a little reminder here about there's so many different types of birds out in the rainforest. A few that we'll see in books and videos are parrots, um, that macaw parrot, which is beautiful, the red, the blues, the yellows on his feathers. Um, a toucan with that big, giant, cool beak, right, that's super, super hard. They can crack nuts with them, really cool. Um, hummingbirds, there, we know that there are so many flowers, beautiful flowers in the rainforest, and hummingbirds go to drink the nectar. What else? Oh, sloth. We know that sloths are very slow. They like to use their claws to wrap right around onto a branch or a vine, and they hang upside down to sleep. There's honey bears. You're going to see honey bears in one of my favorite books that I read to you. It's a rhyming book. Uh, bats. Another, another thing that's like a sloth where it hangs upside down to sleep um, and he's nocturnal. You don't see a, a bat in the daytime in the rainforest, only at night. Frogs, we know the poison dart frogs. We've seen them before, especially the blue ones. We talked a lot about that when we learned about frogs earlier in the school year. The interesting fact about the poison dart frog is that it has so much poison in it. Remember, he has that bright, bright color to warn others, don't eat me, I'm poisonous. He has so much poison inside of him that he could kill 20,000 mice. Isn't that crazy? That's a lot of poison that he has inside his little body. Poison dart frogs are probably this big, okay? Interesting. All right, next up is the chameleon. We've read about chameleons before as well. They have um, they have bodies that can change colors. A lot of people think that they change their colors um, so that they can blend in and that they do it on purpose. But we learned that chameleons will change their colors to protect themselves. And it goes on their feelings. If they're feeling very nervous, they will change their colors. Um, something else we learned is whenever they would fight with each other, remember there was a few branches in one of our books, we thought it was so funny. They would only fight with chameleons that were the same as them. So they wouldn't fight with a different type of chameleon, only their own type, and they would fight with each other and change colors, which was pretty funny. Um, chameleons also, they're not that big, but their tongues are 17 inches long. It's crazy. It's a crazy, crazy thing to have long tongues if you're not even that big. Next up is the iguanas and the geckos and the lizards. We've learned a whole lot about them when we were um, talking about reptiles versus amphibians. So we already know about them. Um, otters, you'll see a lot of little river otters in the rainforest. Um, the Amazon rainforest is the biggest one. It's pretty funny because you guys probably know the word Amazon from where you shop, right? Amazon comes and delivers stuff to your house. 
But the Amazon, which is in South America, is the biggest rainforest in the world. And the Amazon rainforest has an Amazon river going right through it. And there's lots of river otters that happen to be swimming around in there. Also in the Amazon river, you will find piranhas. I remember that Noel enjoyed drawing a piranha when we learned about oceans. And a piranha fish, um, they, they tend to swim together in a school. And they are the fish that have big teeth which is pretty unusual. You don't find fish with teeth, but piranhas have big teeth and they look for blood in the water. So it's kind of like how a shark can smell blood. Piranhas are the same way. All right, we also have listed here butterflies. There's over 20,000 different types of butterflies in the rainforest and they're all so beautiful. I think I'll draw one today. And the last one is a tarantula. Do you know what a tarantula is? Tarantula is a spider, a big spider. Mrs. Garrapy's not a fan of spiders. A tarantula spider can be 10 inches wide. Can you imagine walking through a rainforest and you come across a spider that goes from here to here? Ah! No, thank you. All right. I'm going to say each name and I want you to repeat after me. Are you ready? Here we go. Jaguar, ocelot, monkeys, tapper, capybara, okapi, ants, anteater, snakes, crocodile, turtle, tortoise, armadillo. That was a lot. All right, repeat after me. Birds, sloth, honey bear, bat, frogs, chameleon, iguana, gecko, lizard, otter, piranha, butterflies, tarantula. Awesome job listening to this whole video. I know it was a long one, but we've got so many animals and creatures that are in that rainforest. More than half of the world's animals are found in this ecosystem. Great job, everybody.